In today's video, we're taking a look at how to install a universal rotisserie kit for grills, easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do. Everything that we use on the video, we're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today and grilling is in your mind. And not any grilling, rotisserie. You saw the fool in that place going in circles and you said, I can do that. Don't worry, here at the Stata Box team, we've got your back. Inside that place where you saw the chicken turning and turning, eating, but a back is a back. And this technique will work for any universal rotisserie kit for grills. We've been using this one for a couple of months and we gathered a few pro tips that can help you throughout the way. And also on our next video we'll show how to rotisserie a chicken on the grill easy and simple. All links on the description. And the first thing that you want to do is verify that you have a kit. The second thing you want to verify that you have a grill. In this case we're using a gas grill and the most important thing you want to bring yourself. And if you come with an ice cold bubbly liquid with gold, sparkling, water, even better. Always remember to use safety. Many of the parts are very sharp and that's why they're covered. Because the last thing you want on a grill day is to die, especially before eating. And now that we got all the disclaimers out the way, we're ready to see what we have in the box. And the first thing that we get is barbecue paper. I mean the owner's manual. I mean the instructions. We were born with the PDF in our blood. Just put it to the side and we'll glance at it later. And the second Second thing that we get on the kit is heavy duty stainless steel meat forks. And yes, I had to glance at the owner's manual to verify if that's the name. As you can see, it has a tightening screw. So when we insert the spit rod, which is another name on the owner's manual, it won't move from place to place and have your day go from a barbecue day to a cleanup day. The first pro tip is having a new Ziploc bag or a container to save the safety plugs is a good idea because once you take them out to grill, you might not find them again. Next, we have two brackets. We have the motor mounting bracket and on the other side will be the rod holding bracket. As you can see, there are many holes for mounting because depending on your grill, the height that you're looking for, you're gonna have different options options on mounting. A second pro tip, it could be that when you mount it the first time, it won't be even. So patience goes a long way. So don't be surprised if in your first try is lopsided. Next, we have the locking collar. This is what's going to hold the rod in place on the mounting bracket. Next, we have the counterweight. A pro tip, when installing the counterweight, let's say on a chicken cookout, you want to have the weight on the flat side of the chicken, meaning on the opposite side of the bread. Next, we have the extension rod. Next, we have the plastic handle. And next, we have the washer nut. And now comes the big player in the party. We have the motor. It has a cord that almost reaches six feet. This particular motor is a four watt motor and it can handle a bird up to almost 27 pounds. But depending on your kit, there's some that can go up to 55 pounds or even more. So that's another pro tip. Depending on your situation, that's something that you want to verify ahead of time before buying your kit because the last thing you want is your poultry catching a bus ride to nowhere. And lastly, we have the heavy duty stainless steel spit rod. This particular one fully assembled measures 34.4 inches or 87.4 centimeters. So another pro tip, measuring your grill beforehand is the way to go. You want to get a kit that will fit your particular grill. As you can see, the rod itself has a square shape that when aligned correctly, it will fit only one way on your motor housing. And now, finally, we've gotten to the end of the road. We have our nuts, washers, and screws. They can either be Phillips screws or flathead screws, or in some cases, nuts and bolts. And now you've done it. We can take a break, get your liquid, gold, bubbly water, and let's get back to work. Once we located our grill, we wanna go ahead and open it. Next, we wanna locate the installation holes located on each side of your part particular grill. If your particular grill does not have any hole, you can always mark your grill using the mounting brackets and with a drill make the holes. And what we want to do using our spit rod is verify, measure, level before we place the screws. So seeing on the mounting bracket which hole or level is going to give you the best installation. And what we mean is even on both sides, level all across. And this is the part of the video where you remember that first pro tip a 
of patience because you might not get it right on the first try. If you do, you're cut above the rest. We salute you. We're gonna place our bracket, then we're gonna insert our screw from the outer part, and then on the inside, we're gonna place our washer and then our nut. We like to thread in the nut by hand and then finishing it off with some pliers and a screwdriver. And as a pro tip, this would avoid any stripping of the thread sideways insertion. And now that this video went rated R, we're ready to repeat the process on the other side. Once again, we're gonna take our spit rod and do a measuring level test with the other side to get it as level as we can. So verifying which level of the holes will get you there is the way to go. And remember, you wanna make sure that you tighten very well. You just wanna make sure that the bracket doesn't move when you tug on it. Remember, it is going to carry weight and movement, so picking up your sleeves, showing all those muscles to the world and to the grilling community is the way to go. We believe in you. And remember, the ancient technique passed down generation to generation of lefty loosey, righty tidy. Another pro tip, remember that the side that you wanna have the motor is the side that you wanna put the mounting bracket that has the motor tabs. In this case, we chose the left side because on the right side, we have a burner. Just in case we wanna use it. You've done it. You broke your grill. You added horns to it that it never had. Now we're ready to install our motor. And another pro tip, the way that you place the motor will help with the leveling. If you notice it's a little bit off, sometimes you could just flip the motor upside down, having the button at the top, and this will do the trick. It did for us. And now we can go back to our torture chamber. We get our torturing tools, I mean to our work surface using our tools. And what we're basically going to do is do a test run to see if everything is installed correctly. We're gonna insert our forks because we don't have spoons. And what we wanna make sure is that when we're tightening the tightening screw, the screw hits on a flat side and not on a corner of the rod. This is going to secure your poultry or your meats or foods securely to the rod and not flying away to its next destination. Another pro tip, we noticed that when using the rotisserie a few times, in one occasion, the screw went loose and the bird turned on itself. What we did to combat that is when we we're stringing the bird, we would also place a string from one fork to the other and tighten everything in one piece. It never got loosened again because we made sure that we tightened the screw harder the next time, but it's good to know that there's a plan B if A fails. We insert the pointy part of the rod on the motor and then on the other side we place the collar. We ensure that the inner ring is on the opening of the bracket. Once it is we tighten down the screw. Next we install our extension rod and remember usually to the left we loosen and to the right we tighten. Now we're ready to insert our nut washer. Next we install our counterweight and finally our knob. We make sure that every Everything's tightened because the last thing you want is to get loose in party mode. In our case, we did a few modifications by adding two more washers on one of the sides, as you can see here, and this prevents the knob from getting loose in the process of the cookout. In your case, it might not be needed. And now comes the most important part of the whole video. You want to verify that your grill door closes. As you can see, it's a little bit higher on the left side, but when we flip the motor over, it was flat and level. And now comes the second most important part of the whole video. We're going to connect it to our extension core or outlet, turn it on and see if it works. And that is our next pro tip. Before you do the whole installation, we recommend that you connect your motor, verify that it's working before you go to all the trouble and then noticing as DOA. And now you've done it. You become the talk of the town. On your next grilling session, you'll become a level five cooking chef. Meanwhile, you relax and the food cooks itself. You can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone on the Statterbox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching and here's a link to our latest video.